Hey y'all, welcome back to Movement Link. So I just want to take a few minutes and share a few th things uh, that I do every day and some routines that I have uh, that I have implemented for a while and have had a tremendous impact on my life. So starting with what I do in the morning. So when I wake up, one of the first things I do is start to make coffee. By my coffee maker, there's a little note that says do mobility. So every single morning I do 10 minutes of mobility or yoga type things. Uh, and the yoga type stuff is a lot like what our warmups look like in the gym. So really what I'm trying to do is hit a bunch of end ranges of motion consistently every single day. Uh, and then if I have any trouble areas going on, I like to do some extra mobility like with a lacrosse ball or a foam roller or a band or whatever that might be. So uh, a lot of times when we're trying to create new habits, and you can use this really with any of them, uh, I like to use the strategy uh, where you look for a trigger, you come up with a rule, and then if you can, create a reward for yourself. So how this works in this scenario is my trigger is the note by the coffee maker. So it's uh one thing to want to do something it's another thing to even remember that you want to do something so that trigger whatever it might be it might be you just put your toothbrush in a different spot it might be you move this over there it might be an alarm on your phone there's a lot of different ways you can trigger yourself uh, but the role of the trigger is to remind you of the new thing you want to do the rule is something and i like to think about it as something that a stronger fed a uh, high willpower taking the time to think about your future version of yourself wants you to do so i can't rely on in the moment kyle to make decisions that will push me in the direction i want my life to go i need to rely on strong taking your time to think about it Kyle, that version of me, to make decisions, and I need in the moment, Kyle, just to follow through on those decisions. I know that sounds kind of funny, but in this scenario, honestly, almost every single morning, almost every morning, I do not want to do 10 minutes of yoga or mobility. Every morning, I'm trying to come up with an excuse or a reason not to do it. I get triggered to do it. I try and come up with that excuse. I've got my rule. I do this before I have my reward, which in this scenario is gonna be my coffee. My rule is I have to do it before I have coffee, so I just follow through. The funny thing is even though I go into it kicking and screaming, there hasn't been one single time afterwards that I was not glad that I had done it. And that's why we rely on the strong version of you to make decisions for the in the moment version of you because the in the moment version of you is tired and you've got low willpower and this is going on and you're stressed and you've got all these other things going on. So in the moment you just needs to follow through. That's all in the moment you's job is. The other thing that's gone, a really, uh, gone really far for me is just meal planning. So I just take a few minutes. Uh, sometimes I write it down. Most of the time I just sit there and think real quickly and I look at, hey, where's my first meal gonna come from? Where's my second meal gonna come from? Where, where's my third meal co gonna come from? This way I know, do I need to bring food with me to the gym? Do I not have food with me? So do I need to pick something up on the way to the gym? Do I need to go to the grocery store? And do I need to create time to cook? Uh, am I gonna be in a situation where I'm out and then I'm gonna have an hour to go get food? I decide where I'm gonna go. Uh, or am I going out to eat with friends or family? Uh, if I know where I'm going, I can go ahead and get on, look at a menu, make my decisions about what I wanna eat, and then when I'm stressed, when I'm running behind on time, when I'm trying to hang out with people and look at a menu, I've already made my decision on what I need, I want myself to do. Then again, it's just about following through. You just have to follow through. The other thing I do is I note the time of the first thing I consume other than water. And I just do this mentally uh, because doing a 12-hour eating window is pretty easy uh, math to do. You just change the a.m. to the p.m. Uh, anyway, so the first thing I consume other than water. So for me, typically, that's black coffee. So even coffee, tea, it could be any type of food. Anything you consume starts the clock. So what clock am I talking about? 
Uh, the first thing you consume triggers enzymes in your gut microbiome to go to work. It goes to work for about 12 hours. So anything that we consume outside of that 12 hour window, even if it's healthy, our body is not equipped to handle it the same way as it would within this time. So uh, the way I like to think about it is all your workers go to work and when it's quitting time, they go home. So as you're consuming thing, either that's gonna bring them back in and it's gonna throw you off your circadian rhythm or they're not gonna be there to handle the food. So food that might be handled really, really well earlier on, the exact same food, the exact same calories, the exact same macros might not be handled the same way, probably won't be handled the same way later on. So what I like to note is uh, that first time of consumption, what I'm trying to do is at a maximum have a 12 hour eating window or consumption window. And uh, I don't necessarily like eating or I, at least I like to distinguish because coffee tea sets it off and we need to consider that too. Uh, so 12 hours, 10 hours is better than 12, eight is better than that. Uh, I haven't heard much if six is better and it just keeps getting better and better, but those are kind of the three I've heard, 12 good, 10 better, eight even better. So uh, that's kind of what I'm up to in the morning. In the evening, going back to the circadian rhythm, so your circadian rhythm is basically your biological clock and how it relates to the sun and to nighttime and these types of things. It's extremely important to promote wakefulness during the day so you can be productive and active and high, have high energy levels. And it's also extremely important at night so your body can start releasing the right hormones uh, to promote sleep. So uh, the two biggest things that really contribute to keeping your circadian rhythm on track uh, are light and temperature. So the easiest way to think about this is just think about what's going on outside. During the day, the sun is up, it's hotter. At night, sun is down, it's cooler. So what we want to do and what I do is uh, I dim my lights and I lower the temperature with the sun. So around sunset, I start trying to make the house darker and darker and darker leading in and it really helps me fall asleep. It really helps me get high quality sleep because my body is in this rhythm. It kind of knows what's coming. Uh, so the other thing that happens in the evening is I'm just double checking that eating window and making sure that I stop all my consumption of anything other than water uh, at max at that 12 hour spot. The other thing, uh, this kind of gets into journaling a little bit. Uh, and so with our momentum clients, one of the things we do is we hand them a 90 day journal and they have a few AM things they do and a few PM things they, they write down and uh, track each day. Uh, but one of the PM things that I really, really like is the three amazing things that happened to you today. So what I noticed is there were so many great things going on in my life and great interactions I was having with people that I never, ever thought about again, ever. And that's crazy to think about. You have an amazing, good, positive interaction with somebody or something or something happens and you never think about that moment again in your life. So what I found is when I took the time to sit there and think back across my day and find three great things, I was pulling back happy memories. So it was making me so happy. But then we took this a step further uh, and my wife and I introduced the three amazing things as our first interaction together at the end of the night when we had both been away and had our days and doing everything. So instead of coming into the house and bringing a negative story or a negative this or whatever people bring when they're tired and stressed out and all these things, when we saw each other, we were bringing together the three amazing things. So not only was I getting to uh, hear amazing things going on in her life, uh, I was taking the time to think about amazing things that happened to me to share it with her. So uh, it was a great change. So if you have someone to do that with, I highly recommend it. If you don't have someone to do that with, simply take some time to think about it or write it down. It is completely worth it. Uh, it'll surprise you. Uh, the other thing uh, is I also write down one thing I wish I did better that day. This has been huge in helping me change my behaviors throughout the day. 
So if it's an uh, interaction I had, if it wasn't picking up a piece of trash, there's so many things. And then what I end up seeing is you write it down and you kind of regret that you didn't do it. One of the biggest motivators for change is regret. So you kind of regret that you didn't do it. And then what you start seeing is when you write that same thing down, either multiple days in a row, or you start realizing you've written it down too many times, it's so much easier to catch yourself in the act and be like, wait a minute, I'm gonna take a few steps back here uh, because I don't wanna have to write this down in my journal. So this has been something great uh, that helps me catch myself in the act of doing something that I wish I wasn't doing and helps me make better choices. So uh, just to review here, uh, these are just some simple things that I've implemented uh, daily in my life that really have had a huge impact on making my life easier and how happy I am and getting the results I want. Uh, and the main takeaway I want you to have here is that when you're strong, when you're fed, when you have some time to sit down and think, that's when you should be making the choices for what you want yourself to do and the efforts that you want yourself to do that are gonna lead you ultimately into the direction you wanna go. And then it's your job in the moment just to follow through. So if you want yourself to do 10 minutes of mobility every day, and there is a time and place to look back and see if those efforts are actually things you wanna be doing, but that time is not in the moment. In the moment, you just follow through on what the previous version of yourself wish you were doing. And when you get good at just following through and following through and following through, these things just stack and stack and stack for huge results over time. I hope this helps. Talk to you all soon.